Hi, this is DOSBox Mom, and welcome back to Let's Play Treasures of the Savage Frontier. Um, we did pick somebody to give the sheer hammer to. Um, the it's not that powerful a weapon in itself, aside from the plus three, but it is a one-handed weapon, which means that one of the party members that's been using a two-handed you know, plus three or better weapon could switch back to that. The clue book does suggest heading back to the mainland to stock up on spell scrolls, potions, and the like before tackling the ice peak itself, and I think I will do just that. Also, I might want to stop at some place with a vault so Jabarkus and Creador who both have shields, magic shields that they don't absolutely need to use they can drop them off at the vault then one of the other party members can pick up the shields and that'll let them use a shield in conjunction with a one-handed magic weapon which will improve their armor class. So I'm going to pause the recording, head back to the mainland, and then we'll start up again once we're back at Fireshare. So see you in a little bit. And we're back. It took a while, um, but we went back to Neverwinter bought some potions there, went back to Orlembor, bought some more potions there, bought a couple of spell scrolls, mostly potions, then came back here to Fire Shear and bought some magic arrows for everybody. Turned out the, you know, plus three, plus four weapons that the other party members had, other than the Shear Hammer and the Teresa's flail plus three were all two-handed weapons. Well, except for Josita's, of course, but she can't use shield anyway. And found out the hard way that there was no way for the NPCs in the party, Jabarkas and Creador, to deposit their shields that they didn't need in the vault in Neverwinter. So we weren't able to get nicer she nicer armor for I mean, shields for the party members. But we're back at the docks in Fireshire and we're ready to head to the Ice Peak. So let's go. A blast of cold air strikes your face before you as a trackless sea. A party made up of a human, a, no a dwarf, and a gnome approaches and asks, To where do you wish to travel? Uh, let's go to the Ice Peak. Ah, says the dwarf, many of our brothers are bound there also. They shall be glad to see you come. Please accept free passage aboard your ship. Okay, so this is the one time when we get to go on a ship for free. You prepare to depart, but the shearmaster takes you aside. Be sure of your goals at the Ice Peak, he warns. You record the rest of what he tells you as Journal Entry 77, which we are flipping to right now. The ice peak's a very dangerous place, and your enemies have knowledge of your coming. You'll arrive at the chief city, Orisbarg, and the Orlsbarg, and the people there will be hostile, for their leaders are allied with Luskan. Get through the city as fast as possible. Head east to the settlement called Bjorn's Hold. His, pe his people care not for Luskan, but watch for enemies everywhere. Next, go north to the village of Ice Wolf. It's a town of gentle people, the ice hunters, but Northmen also live there. If the stories are true, it's from Ice Wolf that you'll be able to set out in search of the gem. Good luck! We climbed into a small boat, and minutes later they had rowed us out to a ship waiting close to shore. 
the trip to the ice peak is short but bitterly cold. And by the way, it's an unusually cold weekend for mid-September where I live, so yeah, I'm in the mood for bitterly cold. Eladan curses every wave and between trips up on deck to the railing swears never to ride even a rowboat again. Okay, so now we're in Arlsbarg. Ah. Uh, which is a small town run by a man named Tranja Rolsk, a Luskan stooge who hopes to capture us and earn a reward. He's ordered his guards to direct us to his office where he's rigged a trap. Um, of course, we don't want to get caught in the trap. Because it wastes time. The more time the party takes here in Orlsborg, the more black robed men arrive on the island and start chasing us. Uh, if we meet Northmen in the town or on the mountain pass, don't attack, tell them the truth, and we'll earn their friendship. We can rest in the inn, the room with the dwarves, and in the Northmen room. Okay. <coughs> and it is possible to sail back to Fireshire, but it would cost 200 platinum per party member. Okay, so let's start heading north. Uh, probably no need to go to the guard room. Okay, to our east is the Ice Peak Inn, which is a safe place to rest. Let's go west and... Okay, let's take a look in here. Although this room is empty, it looks as though two or three people have just departed, and in a hurry. Much of their equipment and clothing looks strange and foreign. Okay. Could be spies. A battle axe with a tarnished steel blade is mounted on this door. The sign above it reads, Armory of Captain White Axe. Good armor, better blades. Um, yeah. And let's see what he's got for sale. Basically, plus one stuff. Yeah, no regular short bows plus one, just composite ones, which our mage thief can't use. But if we need to buy more arrows, this would be a good place to do it. Okay, let's keep going. Several Northmen are resting in this chamber. Upon your entrance, one jumps up, shouting, Be you more slime from Luscon? No. Good, the man grumbles, calming down and returning to his seat. You can rest here if you want. Okay. happens if we go in here. Several guards push past you into the street as you enter this room. Probably from Luscon. A dark robed woman turns to face you as you enter and softly utters a command. Her pets charge forward to attack. Oh, great. She's got puppy dog, ice puppy familiars. All right, let's see if we can do hold person on her. Nope, <laughs> oh, didn't work. Okay, 
fireball would be very useful here because it would not only disrupt her spell casting it would also do extra damage to those ice puppies or ice clowns <coughs> okay and perfect Okay. Well, no need to worry about spell casting anymore. Now we will probably want to find a place to rememorize spells after this. That room where the Northmen were might be a good place. Oh yeah, we should be done with this shortly. And we'll just switch him back to his sword. Ah, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Ugh. There we go. And that's it. So, a little bit of gems and platinum. Let's share the wealth. Okay, non magical darts. Magic weapons might be worth taking for. A vast virus database has been updated. Yes, and another plug for my antivirus software. Okay, well, if I had to take one thing, the tracers are probably the most valuable. And we'll get Teresa healed. And I think we're done here. Tomas says, I don't like the looks of this. They're training the ice hounds to fight with them in battle. Okay. So this is not a safe place to rest. So we'll want to go back to the room where we've met the Northmen, which is very close. Yeah. We don't want to spend too much time roaming around Arlsbarg because we don't want bad guys chasing us. 
Okay, there is a path going up the mountain, but it's a dead end. There's just wandering monsters that way. We'll skip that. And, yeah, nothing through that door. Except theoretically a back entrance to the armory. Okay, now through this way... Well, there's a way to transfer Rolska's office. Don't need to go there. And Rolska's jail cells. Although we might be able to... rescue an ice hunter from one of the cells. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, well, but I think there's a couple of other things we can go to also. Uh, on the other hand, let's rescue the Ice Hunter. See if we can. But we don't go in, into that guy's office, which is right behind us. See if we can get in here. Josita says, this looks like a jail. Okay. Now there should be a prisoner in this cell. Chained to the wall in this cell is a small black-haired man with light brown skin. He says, my name is Icy Trees, and I know you're the heroes of Ascor. I know that much that you should know, Icy Trees says. He talks with you for some time, and you record his words as Journal Entry 80. We broke the shackles that held the man, and he thanked us with a sense of urgency in his voice. Be warned, Tranger Rosk is a very bad man. He supports those in Luskan and their pirates. Stay away from him. We know why you're here. We wish to help. We must seek our leader, Bleak Sky, at morning. Hurry! Go east of Bjorn's Hold. Then from the North Pier, take a boat north to Ice Wolf. Okay, so let's get out of this jail. Oh, there we go. Okay, now. Ah, many dwarves sit around a long table in this room. They apparently recognize you as heroes of Ascor, for they greet you with a rousing cheer as you enter. <coughs> so this is a safe place to rest. We'll just make a save point here. We don't actually need to rest. All right. Now over here is another place where Luscon guards sometimes gather, but they're not there now. And to the south should be a guard room. Guards dressed in the li livery of Luscon occupy this room. One stands at Heroes of Ascor, we've been expecting you. May we escort you to our leader, Tranger Rolsk? Uh, no thank you. That's the trap. Very well, Tranger Rolsk will be disappointed. He's very anxious to see you and meet the heroes of Ascor. Yeah. And put us up in his nice jail. Okay. We avoided that trap. You leave the town of Arlsberg behind, heading out into a narrow winding path through the ice and snow. Northman pass you on the path, heading down the mountain into Arlsbarg. And so this is the way to Bjorn's Hold. We could take either of 
in the north door or the south one. I think the south one brings us closer to the settled areas of the hold. Yeah. A little bit like those crevasses in Secret of the Silver Blades, but notice the snow and ice aren't piled up quite so high. So we're not quite in the middle of a glacier. A Yeti patrol appears ahead of you. They bear their fangs and attack the party. Uh, let's see if we can flee. Okay. Oh, great. One of the eighty grabbed us. Although, if that's... If it's just those four Yeti... Yeah. We might be able to move... Hosita... Okay, well, not quite to the end. Okay. I was hoping to move her around to the end so she could do a lightning bolt. <coughs> hmm. Could be movement restricted because of the snow. Which stinks. Okay. We're taking her this far back so she doesn't get any bounce back effect on herself from the lightning bolt. here, but okay, now she can't heal anyone. We'll save anyway. And let's see if there's any place we can rest. Inside. Oh, if the party's befriended the Northmen, they also may rest anywhere except on the mountain pass. Well, let's move just a little bit. Okay, I'd say this counts as not on the mountain pass now. Kind of nice not having to find a building to rest inside. Now, where is Bjorn? Oh, not there. A great party of Northmen approaches. You record what happens next as journal entry two. And of course, that's at the opposite end of the adventures journal from where I was just at. So it'll be just a second. And hush up timer. We'll read what Bjorn has to say and then we'll conclude the episode. The leader of the men, wrapped in thick furs, faces you, arms raised. As he prepares to speak, many Northmen and the smaller ice hunters push in behind you. I'm Bjorn, son of Bjorn, chief of this village, he begins. 
Foes of Luskan, heroes of Ascor, my people salute you, Bjorn yells. The Northmen raise their axes and cheer. Good fortune on your mission, he adds, and leads his men away. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's good. So we'll end the recording here and continue our journey around the Ice Peak in the next episode. See you then. <laughs>